test. Is it good? One, two, three. Test, test. Thank you. Okay, we'll start. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, now and ever to the age of all ages, man. <clears throat> um, for those of you who, you who don't know me, I like psychology a little bit. <laughs> um, so I thought I'd do something on that today. Um, quick question. Does anyone know what the, one of the most common mental disorders is, not only in America, but in the world? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't like dentistry. <laughs> Especially, I don't like going to the dentist. <laughs> Any ideas? De depression is used to be the most, but now it's the second. I hear schizophrenia all the time. It's actually quite low, um, but it's one of the most severe. Anxiety, very good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so this is just something I pulled up the other day. I probably can't see it. But <clears throat> it used to be around 18% um, of the total population before the pandemic. During the pandemic, <laughs> it was 41. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, so anyway, and the second one is, is like we said, is, is depression. This did a lot of other... Um, in mental health issues, but not necessarily the disorders. So that's probably not a very good slide to, to refer to. I had another one, but it was outdated. Um, but over the history, it's like usually depression and anxiety are neck and neck. <coughs> um, <coughs> so um, it's estimated that about 40 million uh, adults in America uh, have some sort of anxiety disorder. Um, we all have anxiety in our lives, but at some point, it switches over when it's really intense. And I'll, I'll help like, describe um, when it gets too far, right? Um, and even the gospel and the Lord speaks about worrying and anxiety, right? Because the Lord says, who can add, uh, by, by worrying, how can you add one cubit to your stature, right? So today, we'll talk a little bit about what is anxiety, <laughs> how, how to get rid of it, um, just some definitions, right? Some running symptoms. Um, so there's physical symptoms, like having to do with, you know, um, uh, increased heart rate, um, shortness of breath, chest pain. Sounds like a heart attack, right? A lot of people sometimes go in for, I have, you know, heart attack symptoms and it ends up being um, a panic attack or just anxiety, right? Dizziness, light, lightheadedness, sweating, hot flashes, um, nausea, um, and so on and so forth, right? Um, so that's the physical symptoms. There's also cognitive symptoms where you feel like you're losing control, you're una unable to cope, um, you're afraid that you might be going crazy, right? Um, uh, poor concentration, confusion, distractibility, that's also kind of overlaps with depression. Um, not able to remember things, or to reason, right, or a loss of objectivity, right? So here are just some of, some of the um, various, and then there's behavioral symptoms, like having problems with sleep, right? Um, restlessness, hyperventilation, um, motionless, difficulty speaking, um, and so on and so forth, right? So um, these are just some, some symptoms, right? Um, and the Lord says, not to worry. And the Bible says not to worry, but a lot of times we worry to the point of anxiety, right? And even the proverb says anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad, right? So we have a lot of things in our life that we worry about, right? Even when we're babies, we're worried about what? Being loved, being cared for, having our needs met. If they're not met, we cry, <laughs> right? When we get a little bit older, we worry about the same things, um, and l maybe more of, I, I need some love and respect you know, from my parents. When we get even older than that, we don't care much about our parents, but we're worried and concerned about our friends 
and gaining their respect. And then a little bit later, hopefully, we worry about our education and our SATs and what college we're going to get into and what career field and then who we should marry. And, and then when we get married, we worry about our finances, um, getting that dream house car, you know, living the American dream. Then we have kids and we start to worry about our kids, <laughs> right? Um, their education, are they growing properly? Um, uh, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and oftentimes our worrying about these things doesn't help. It actually does the opposite. Um, and sometimes the thing that we fear most ends up happening because in our rush to help solve the problem, or we make the problem worse, right? <clears throat> um, but just to clarify, you know, there's everyday worries. Maybe that's not a good, uh, I should have put worries. In, and then there's anxiety disorder, right? So the everyday worries are about, you know, all the things that I kind of men mentioned, right? Um, but when it flips to like something to be concerned about is when it's a constant thing and where it's un unsubstantiated and when um, I end up taking certain actions that are not helpful, right? Um, like by avoiding things or avoiding people or I'm changing um, my day-to-day -day because I'm concerned, right? Um, so um, what are some of the causes that have to do with this? Um, actually, I think I might skip some of these because it's a little too detailed, but sometimes we worry because of sickness. Sometimes we worry because um, of biological issues. Um, sometimes it's a spiritual problem, right? As the Lord says, there's no peace for the wicked, right? Um, sometimes it's because I'm worried so much about the world, then I can't have any peace. Sometimes I'm worried about, um, I'm not able to trust God in my life, and so I take the responsibilities that I should be giving to God upon myself. Um, <clears throat> and so, there's so many things we can go into details here, but I just want to brush and touch the surface because some people think this doesn't have to do with the church or my spiritual life, but there is some overlap, um, right? And s some other causes are, are mental or psychological, right? Either I, I tend to overfocus on something, on a specific event or a specific fear. Other times it's just something that happened to me in my past that I'm still not able to um, process or to get over and so it's affecting my day-to-day -day. sometimes it's certain assumptions that i have of people or myself or the environment sometimes it's i tend to personalize things like by um uh, what's that exactly um like victimizing yourself or interpreting a certain event um uh as it had to do with you. For example, here, like, um, for example, here's a, something that we wrote. Jill became anxious after a business meeting, right, with her supervisor, when, when her supervisor mentioned that one manager was about to be laid off, right? So immediately, she personalized the statement by assuming she directed it at her, even though there was no evidence, right? So, you know, like, you know, like when the Lord said, you know, one of you will betray me, right? And they, all the disciples said, is it I? Is it? Of course, Judas knew it was him. <laughs> he already made the plans, <laughs> right? But so sometimes that personalization, personalization is good, but when it happens all the time, like, you know, like when we say, you know, 0.01% of the population has this issue, oh, that's me. <laughs> For, like, <laughs> you know, like, um, I th I'm sure a lot of students, when they went to med school, like one, what a, one of the most common problems that they have in the first year is what? What's that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Can you explain? <laughs> No, no, that's okay. Megadino. Um, it's, well, this happened in America. We read, so 
They, they internalize everything that they read every day. Oh, that's, I have that disease. Here's the symptom. It, it must be me. Hypochondria. <laughs> right? Um, even in psychology, we start, oh, I have that. <laughs> or my, some, later on, we're like, no, my friend has that. <laughs> but um, that's a problem sometimes when it, when it becomes too much. Right? Um, or polarization, where everything is in black and white. I think in the Middle East, sometimes we like to do this, um, to overgeneralize things. Um, <clears throat> or to have high expectations. I should be doing this. Um, I, I should not make this mistake. Like, we should, we should, should. And then, like, be, because we can't, then the anxiety comes. Um, <clears throat> here's another slide. It's probably not easy to see, but this was kind of like a summary. But all or nothing thinking, um, it's not healthy. Overgeneralizing, uh, disqualifying the positive. So, like, you have a mental filter of all the goods and bads, but you only take out the bad, and so you're only focused on the bad, and you're ignoring the good things, like, for example, uh, if you get a report card, right, <laughs> and, um, or, uh, what do you call it in, at work when you get your um, performance evaluation, performance review, right, you only focus, oh, they said this bad, one bad thing, and there's like 10 good things, I can't believe they said this, you know, th they hate me, like, <laughs> so you're going to the extreme, right, um, <clears throat> Jumping to conclusions, um, only emotional reasoning. So you're so you're deciding only based on how you feel, not on the circumstances, right? Um, okay, I think you get the point. Um, so before we get to the details, anyone heard of the iceberg of emotion? So um, this is basically what we feel or do is up here, but what we feel and think is underneath, right? So sometimes we're only looking at what's above the surface, but more importantly, there's probably hundreds of other thoughts and feelings that are buried inside that are causing us to feel and to, and to do certain things outwardly. Does that make sense? Um, <clears throat> so for example, like I could be anger, angry or asleep, uh, lacking sleep, right? Or not avoiding or something. And it's maybe because it's I'm embarrassed, or I'm ashamed, or I'm depressed, or jealous, or whatever. <clears throat> so sometimes we don't even realize that we're f feeling a certain way, and, and then if we're bottling it up or pushing it down, it'll come out outwardly in one way or another. Okay? And that's not necessarily a bad thing, because that's kind of like a, a warning sign that there's something internally wrong that we need to fix. Okay, so, and it doesn't just apply with, with anxiety, but all these hidden emotions, right? Um, if I'm um, uh, afraid of closed spaces, right? So maybe it's afraid of dying, right? Or if I'm, um, uh, forgetting, um, it could be, that's not here. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm forgetting something, you know, it could be a, a sense that I'm uh, not, not necessarily afraid, but not worried about anything, <laughs> right? <laughs> Ignoring, right? Um, okay, so um, let's more focus more on the spiritual aspect of dealing with, with anxiety, right? So what are some of, so it's not just uh, sometimes it's related to external circumstances, right? Um, so if I have a financial difficulty or I have a fear of failure, which was on the other slide, um, shyness or there's bad news that happened or a dramatic event, that could trigger um, this to be worse, right? Um, <clears throat> but let's say we're, I think most of us, we, we're not at the verge of, of um, a psychological disorder, but there's always worry and stress and anxiety that is coming upon us. And what are some tools that we could use to, um, to fight off those temptations? Because if we yield to those ideas and those thoughts, yes, it can become worse and worse and worse. Um, and maybe some people more than others. <clears throat> but what are some things that we can do to kind of arm ourselves against these tempting thoughts, right? So. I'll just do four, four um, points, right? Um, a, B, C, D, E, right? 
um, awareness, being still or focusing on scripture, casting your care upon the Lord, contemplation and detachment and, and doing. <clears throat> right. So I'll try to go quickly. I know we're kind of late. Um, so awareness of this, but more of <clears throat> uh, what th this um, father says. Uh, trying to remember who it is. Sorry. Uh, St. Gregory of Nyssa. Right? He says, um, our greatest protection is, is self-knowledge. And to avoid the delusion that we are seeing ourselves when we are in reality looking at something else. This is what happens to those who do not scrutinize themselves. Such persons make very poor guardians of themselves because their absorption in something else. So I'm so com confined or um, I'm so focused on something else, I'm forgetting myself. Right? They overlook what is their own and leave it unguarded. How can a person protect what he does not know? The most secure protection for our treasure is to know ourselves. Each one must know himself as he is and distinguish himself from all that he is not. Um, so um, this is good advice. Right? The more we're in tune, and even psychology now, they have this new, um, new theories and new development of you know, being more aware of yourself and in tune with your environment and your emotions and your thoughts. Like, so, so that's kind of like an overlap with our spirituality, right? So the more in tune we are with ourselves, the better we are off. Because <clears throat> oh, so some people say, oh, uh, my heart is beating. I don't know why. It's like, focus. <laughs> Maybe there's, something, there's something that's going on um, that is triggering this. Maybe not in the present, but um, in your life, OK? Um, the second thing is to be still and know that I'm God, Psalm 46, right? Um, <clears throat> so, of course, someone is getting worried, like, just calm down. That doesn't help, <laughs> right? But when we tell ourselves that, like, and, and know that God exists, right, and we take off the certain burden and put it on the Lord, then that helps relieve um, some of the pressure, right? Um, <clears throat> so that's why St. Paul says, don't worry about anything, be anxious for nothing, but pray, right? In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So you're putting it, the burden on the Lord. You're not ignoring the burden, but you're placing it on him instead of take, keeping it on yourself. Um, and then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds. So notice, I mean, St. Paul psychology did not exist back then, but <laughs> he's an expert because he knows that these worries come, again, from our hearts and our minds. It's not just our feelings, but it's our thoughts that, that need to be guarded and protected. Um, and so, um, kind of like what we were saying earlier today, um, part of the solution of, of fixing our feelings is by fixing our thoughts, right? And when we can put our thoughts in tune with what scripture says, then half of, or a lot of the time, our hearts follow uh, in <clears throat> the, the road. Okay? Um, so, uh, to, so ask God, do your best, then ask God again. <laughs> right? Um, and, and take the scriptures, like when the Lord says, you know, fear not for I am with you. Um, I am your God, I will strengthen you. I will help you. Um, there's, as you know, there's about 365 verses in the Bible that the Lord is telling us not to fear, not to be afraid. Um, <clears throat> and then go to scripture. Uh, I mentioned this verse before in the past, but it's still very powerful, right? Um, silence or quiet your mouth that your heart may speak, and then silence your heart that God may speak, right? So this is the hesychism that the, the desert fathers speak about of stillness and calming ourselves down so that we can hear the voice of God in our life. Um, and and uh, it takes some effort, but the more important thing is we just need to devote time for this. And then when we do, God begins to speak. Okay? Um, okay. Uh, another good... Proverb, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. So the good word comes from Christ, comes from the scriptures, comes from the Holy Spirit. 
Um, okay. Uh, second to last point, and we'll let you go. Um, St. Peter says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting our burden on the Lord, as the psalm says. Um, <clears throat> it's a process. It's not as easy uh, as it sounds, um, but it needs effort. So in our prayers, in our thoughts, you know, we have to say, okay, just give it to God. Or um, like, you know, sometimes uh, certain uh, fathers, for example, um, when they have a big problem, you know, they'll write the problem, they put it on the altar, or actually all of us do this, right? And as if it has already been solved, right? Um, Pope Krillus of blessed memory, you know, had many stories of where he didn't just do this with God, but he just gave it to Saint Mina. It's, you take care. Of it. Like <laughs> it's like I don't want to deal with this anymore. No, I, I give it to you, and I trust that there will be a solution. Um, <clears throat> so it it takes um, some level of experience, but some trust. And so God allows us, or He asked us to to test Him in this and to try Him. Sometimes. When we're developing trust for some someone um, or in something, we have to take baby steps. So, like, let's say um, you trust him with I don't know um, something small, like being on time, <laughs> right? Uh, compared to you know um, my children, right? Um, and what I'm trying to say is we, we give him the small, we, we try him in the small things, and then when we see that it, he is reliable, we begin to trust him more in our personal life. Um, maybe we didn't do it, like, maybe it's not going to be a perfect record because maybe we did something wrong or we didn't fully trust him. Like we say, well, I'll trust you, and then we go end up doing something that messes everything up, right? That doesn't mean we don't do anything, but we need to cast our care on him um, that because he cares for you. Okay. Um, okay. We will finish with the do... Oops. So, you know, the serenity prayer? You guys heard of that? Um, it says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I can't do um, the courage to do the things that I can and the wisdom to understand the difference, right? So I do whatever I can. I don't do what I'm not able to do, right? And I need God to give me the wisdom to understand what God wants me to participate in and what he wants me to trust him in, okay? Um, Blessed Augustine says, you know, pray as everything depends on God, but work as everything depends on you, um, so, uh, here's another one last um, quote from St. John Climacus. He says, um, think of the spider and compare it with a human being. Okay, nothing is more weak and powerless than a spider. It has no possessions, makes no journeys overseas, amasses no savings, does not meddle in the lives of others, living in this quiet fashion, always hard at work. Nothing could be more lowly than the spider. Maybe the ant, I don't know. <laughs> but he says, Nevertheless, the Lord who dwells on high, but sees what is lowly, extends his providence even to the spider, sending it food every day, and causing tiny insects to fall into its web. Right? So it's kind of like, okay, God, I, I, I don't see everything. I don't know everything. I can't do everything. But what I can do is this web, and I'll do it. Um, so that's kind of like the, the trust that we have to put in the Lord after doing what we can, okay? Um, just some last minute advice, like to be prepared, right? Like, so if you have an exam that you, you, you want to pass, study, <laughs> right? Um, be flexible um, to be able to adapt to the certain situations and not to expect God to solve the problem in a certain way. Um, to be simple by being able to trust him more sometimes we have to simplify the issues and not overcomplicate the problems because then we end up somehow taking god out of the picture when we complicate things 
right? And to be patient because God does not always act in the same time, in the same way that we expect. Okay? Um, okay. Last quote from Blessed Augustine. Um, he said, he said, I sat on top of the world when I felt within that I did not desire anything or fear anything. So this is the det detachment. Um, yes, we're in the world, but not of the world. And so when we're detached, th a lot of those things don't phase us um, as much as they should because um, we're not of the world anymore, right? We're caring more of our salvation and the salvation of others. Um, just some points. Any questions? Hopefully it kind of helped. Um, do you remember the four points? Yes, very good. <laughs> so A. To build awareness of the, of the iceberg situation, right? Awareness of myself, right? B is, there's two Bs. The Bible, right? To re read scripture and get our strength from scripture. And to be still and know that he is God, right? See, casting all your care upon him. Um, also put contemplation, but we skip that. And then D, detachment. Very good. Any questions? Okay. Um, I think we'll conclude. Glory <laughs> to God for everyone. We'll pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen, our loving Lord and Savior, we thank you for everything concerning everything and everything. We thank you for uh, this opportunity to come to you and to look at ourselves and to see how we fare regarding our relationship and our trust in you. Help us to throw everything upon you and to do whatever we can and to detach ourselves from the world so that we will have no, no anxiety, even though there are troubles and the vicissitudes of life um, surrounding us. Help us to overcome our thoughts and our worries and our troubles and to trust in you, the author and finisher of our faith, who loves us more than we can understand and cares for us more than we can fathom. Bless us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ and help all of our brethren who are struggling with uh, various troubles and worries. Help us, help us and use us by the glory of God to grant them peace and serenity and, and joy in you. Through the intercessions of the mother of us all, the leader of us all, the Holy Theotokos, Saint Mary, all the choir of your heavenly saints who have pleased you since Adam to the end of the ages, hear us and have mercy upon us and make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Beloved God's Father, peace is only begotten Son, Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. Communion and gifts, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Depart in peace and peace alone. Thank you.